Okay, so we're going to count all the different ways of drawing this graph without taking your pen up off the page. So we're essentially looking for all the different ways that you can travel around this graph where we go along every edge exactly once. So you call this an Euler path where every edge has to be included but you're only using each edge exactly once. And we're allowed to return to different vertices more than once so that we can include all of the edges here. Now the first insight that will help us to count all of these different Euler paths is let's just think about the starting vertex. So let's say we start from this vertex at the top, then we've got four different edges coming out of this, and we have to use all four of these edges. And it's the same all of our other vertices as well for this graph have four edges going in and out of it. So first of all on our trail we would need to leave this starting vertex then at some point, in order to use these three remaining edges, we would have to return to this vertex. And then to use the next one, we would have to leave again. And finally, to use this fourth edge, we would have to return to this vertex. And then you can see at this point, having used all four of these edges, we get stuck at our starting vertex. We can't use any more edges. So at this point, our path needs to finish. So this is telling us then that if we start at a certain vertex, let's say we start at the one at the top, then our Euler path has to actually finish at the same vertex as well. And this is actually really useful as an insight into tackling this problem because we can split up this overall Euler path, which we can actually say is an Euler cycle now because it begins and ends at the same vertex. We can split this up into two smaller cycles where at some point we go around and then return to our starting vertex, then we leave again and eventually return again to this starting vertex. So we can draw this, let's just show an example to illustrate what's going on here. We've got two cycles essentially where let's say we leave, we go around all of the vertices, we come back, then we need to use all the remaining edges. So we've done our first cycle, then our second cycle where we go around might look like this, where you can see now we've used all of the different edges. So we can split up this overall Euler path into two smaller cycles where we first of all leave the starting vertex, come back, then we have a second cycle where we go around and use all the remaining edges. So you can see at this point that it's possible to do this with two cycles of length 5, but we can actually do this with different lengths of cycle as well. So the shortest possible length of cycle before we return is going to be of length 3, because we obviously can't return in one go, and then from here we can't reuse this same edge because we're only allowed to use each edge once. So we have to go to a new vertex, but then at this point we can return to our starting point. So we can do this with a cycle of length 3, which must then be followed by a cycle of length 7, because we have to use all of the edges, and there are a total of 10 edges here. So one way of achieving this now might be to draw all the 7 edges like this. So we do this with a, first of all a cycle of length 3, then we have a cycle of length 7, which completes our Euler cycle there. So we can do this with 3 and 7, we've seen as well that we can do this with 5 and 5, but we could also do this with a cycle of length 4 followed by a cycle of length 6. So then we can break things up into all of these different cases to make it a bit more manageable. So here we could have a cycle of length 4, but then let's say we go and we have now a cycle of length 6 which follows this, and we use up all of the edges here. So we can do 3 and 7, we can do 5 and 5, and we can also do 4 and 6. And of course here we could also begin with a cycle of length 7 followed by a cycle of length 3, or we could begin with a cycle of length 6 followed by a cycle of length 4. So this splitting up into these different cases is going to allow us now to calculate the total number of different ways of drawing this graph by making each step a little bit more manageable. So first of all, we'll count all the different ways of doing this with a cycle of length 3 followed by a cycle of length 7. So how many cycles of length 3 are there that we could start with? Well, if we draw out our graph again, you'll see that we've got five choices for what our first vertex would be. So let's say, for example, if we choose this vertex at the top, we'll call this A. So they've got five choices, but then once we've used this as our first vertex, we've got four choices for what our next vertex would be. So five times four. Then once we visit our second vertex, we've got three choices for what our next vertex would be. So for each of these, we multiply by three. But then once we've gone to our third vertex, we've got to go back to A to get a cycle of length three. 
So we get a total of 5 times 4 times 3 is 60 cycles of length 3 that we could start with. So now that we've used a cycle of length 3 and we've got back to A, let's just draw out the graph again. We can get rid of these three edges that we've used. So in any scenario with a cycle of length 3 like this, we'll just remove three of the edges. So here we'll be left with now a graph that's only got seven edges like this. So then you can see we're at A. We need to go round in a cycle of length 7. And we've got two choices for where we go from here. We either go to this vertex in the top left, or we go down to this vertex in the bottom left. So here we've got two choices, and we'll just draw out each of these choices separately. And we'll call this second vertex that we visit now V. So in scenario 1, we go to this one in the top left next. So we get rid of the edge going from A to V. Then all we're left with are the following six edges like this. And the other scenario is instead of going next to this vertex, we go to the one in the bottom left. So we'll label that as V for our second scenario here. So in our second scenario, we go from A to the one in the bottom left. So we get rid of that edge and then we're left with a picture which is going to look like this. So in either scenario now, we've got six edges left and we need to, you can see in each case, we're at V and we need to go around in a cycle, return to V, then leave V again. So actually we can start counting up now all the cycles going from V back to itself because at some point in order to get back to our original vertex A, we'll have to do a cycle going from V to itself, then leave again and go back to A. So in either of these scenarios, you can see there are some cycles of length three. So you've actually got in this first scenario, there are two possible triangle cycles of length three. So you've got this one here, and you've also got this triangle down here. And if this was our V, once again, we've got two possible triangles. And for each of these two triangles as well, you can go around it clockwise, or you can go around it anti-clockwise. So in either scenario, we've got four cycles of length three going from V to V. So we've got four cycles of length three going from V to V, but there's also possible cycles of length four here. So in this first scenario, we could go from V in a cycle of length four back to itself. So we could go like this. You can see this gives us a cycle of length four. So there's actually two different ways of doing this, where we could go around one orientation or we could go around in the reverse orientation. And in this scenario where we've got V in the bottom left, it's essentially the same cycle now, but we just start at V at the bottom left. So there is also a cycle of length four we could follow in this scenario, where again, we could go around one orientation or we could go around the other orientation. So here we've got another two possibilities. So in either scenario now, you've got four cycles of length three that you could choose from, or you could have a cycle of length two to go from V back to itself. Then at this point, actually, any of these cycles going from V to V will uniquely determine the path that we need to take now to get back to our starting vertex A. So let's just go through one example. Let's say here, if we had V was our one in the top left, and we used this cycle here of length three, then all that would actually be left to get us back from V to A would be the following graph. And the only edges that would remain would be these three like this. So you can see there's definitely only one way of getting back from V to A in this scenario. And similarly for all of the other cycles of length three, you can argue even by symmetry here. So at this point, there's actually no more choices. And similarly, if we had this cycle of length four, then we'd be even more restricted so in this scenario where we've got V in the top left and we've taken this cycle of length four, one of these two options, then all that we're left with are the following two edges like this. So there's only one way to get back from V to A again. So there's no more choice at this point. So let's summarize what we've done here. We had 60 cycles of length three. Then for each of these, we had two options. We either have our next vertex is this one in the top left or this one in the bottom left with this particular drawing, but however we draw this, there's only two options for which our next vertex is going to be. Then for each of these two, we're going to have another four different options for cycles of length three, but there's also going to be another two options for our cycle of length four going in each of the different orientations. We had two possible cycles of length three with two possible orientations each, one cycle of length four again with two possible orientations. 
So we've got a total of 60 cycles of length three, two options for our next vertex. Then for each of these, we've got a total of six more possibilities for our cycle going from V back to itself, at which point there's no more choice. So 60 times two times six gives us 720 ways of doing this with a cycle of length three followed by a cycle of length seven so that we get back from A to itself. And at this point, it's really interesting. Actually, you can notice that if you have a cycle of length three followed by a cycle of length seven going from A to A, every cycle of length seven followed by a cycle of length three must correspond to a cycle of length three followed by a cycle of length seven. So there's actually also going to be 720 ways of doing this with a cycle of length seven followed by a cycle of length three, because in each case you can just swap your order of the cycle of length three with the cycle of length seven there. So we've now got a total of 720 ways of doing this with three, then seven, and we've got another 720 ways of doing this with a cycle of length seven followed by a cycle of length three. So now we've got a total of 1,440 ways of doing this. And next we'll count all the ways of doing this with a cycle of length four followed by a cycle of length six. So once again, if we draw out our graph, we've got five options for our first vertex. Then for each of these five choices, we get four choices for our second vertex. So we say our first vertex is A, we've got five choices, then for each of these five, four choices for our second vertex. Then at this point, we can't go back to A, we have to go to a new vertex, so we get three choices for our third vertex. And at this point we could go back to A, but this would only give us a cycle of length three. We're trying to count this number of cycles of length four. So here we actually have to go to another vertex. We've only got two options now. And then once we go to our fourth vertex, we've used three edges, so we have to go back to A now to get a cycle of length four. So we've got a total of five times four times three times two, which is 120 cycles of length four that we could start with. So now that we've got all of our cycles of length four, we can erase all four of these edges and see what our picture looks like having started at A. So now we need to find the number of cycles of length six, which go from A back to itself on this new picture where we've got rid of a lot of our vertices. So our new graph is going to look like this, where we've got six edges now. You can see we're at A and we want to go around in a cycle of length six, getting back to A. So we've only got two choices for our next step. We need to go to this one we'll call P in the bottom right, or we could go to Q in the top left here, how it's been drawn. So in this first scenario, let's say we've gone to P as our next vertex. So we delete this edge going from A to P. So then we're left with a picture which looks like this, where we're at P and we need to get back to A. So actually from this point, we have to go to Q because there's only one edge which leaves P now. So we've used all of the other edges involving P. So then we have to go to Q. And at this point, we can't go back to A yet. We've got to go round in this triangle before going back to A. So there's no choice here. We either go to Q and then we can either go around this triangle clockwise or anti-clockwise. Then we have to go back to A. So there's only actually two possibilities for what our cycle would look like here if we go to P. So what about if we go to Q next? So we go from A to Q, let's delete this edge, and then we're left with a picture where we've got a remaining five edges to travel along. And at some point we need to make our way back to A. So we're at Q and we could try going to P, but then if we go to P next, you can see we, we would have to then go back to A, which would give us a cycle which misses out three of these edges here. And the whole point is we want to use every edge exactly once. So we can't actually go to P next. We would have to go around in this triangle, then go to P, then go to A. So once again, we can go around the triangle clockwise or anti-clockwise, giving us another two options in this case, where we go from A to Q. So we've actually only got, for all of these 120 cycles of length four, you can go to P or you can go to Q next. And in each case, there are only two options. So we get a total now of 120 times two times another two. So four times 120 is 480 ways of doing this with a cycle of length four followed by a cycle of length six. We'll write four, six like this. And just like before, we've also then got 480 ways of doing this 
with a cycle of length 6 followed by a cycle of length 4 because you could just swap your two cycles around and for every cycle of length 6 followed by a cycle of length 4 there'll be a corresponding Euler cycle made up of a cycle of length 4 followed by a cycle of length 6. And finally we just need to count the number of Euler cycles made up of a cycle of length 5 followed by another cycle of length 5. So if we draw out our graph again, you'll see there are five choices for our starting vertex. Then for each of these, we've got four choices for our next vertex. So let's say we started at A, then we go to this vertex. So we're up to five times four, just like before. Then we've got to go to one of these three vertices next. So we've got three choices. And then at this point, we don't want to go back to A, because then this will give us a cycle of length three rather than five and we can't go back to our second vertex, so we've got a choice of only two vertices now to go to. So we've got two choices, Then at this point we've used three edges. We don't want to go back to A, because this would give us a cycle of only length four. We don't want to go back to this second vertex, because then we wouldn't actually be able to make a cycle of length five, because then we'd use four edges. We'd have to go now to a different edge before getting back to A. So this wouldn't give us a cycle of length 5. And we can't go back to this third vertex because we've already used this edge here. So at this point, to make a cycle of length 5, there's only actually one choice, which is to go to the remaining fifth vertex. We've used four edges, and then we go back to A like this. So we've got a total of 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 gives us 120 cycles of length 5, which we could use to begin. So then let's imagine we've taken one of these cycles of length 5, like in the drawing. Then all we're left with now is we're at A, and we've got a total of 5 more edges we can go along to give us our remaining cycle of length 5. And you can actually see here there are two options going from A we can either go to, let's call this P, and we'll call this vertex Q. So if we go from A to P, at this point we actually run out of options, don't we, because we've used this edge. so three of the four edges which join the vertex P there have been used up, so there's only one option which is to go up here. At this point there's now only one edge remaining, and similarly here there's only one edge left, and we go to Q, there's only one edge left which takes us back to A. So actually if we go to P there's only one choice, and similarly if we were to go to Q, because all of these vertices have degree 4, they've only got four edges coming out of them. By the time we go to Q we've used up three of those four, so there are no more possibilities left. There's just one choice where we go around this cycle of length 5. We either go around one orientation starting with P, or we go around the other orientation starting with Q. So we only seem to have two possibilities. And this isn't a consequence of how I've drawn the graph. This would be true, let's say, for example, we have a different cycle of length 5 to begin with. So let's say we have this cycle of length 5 to begin with. Then we've got the choice, let's call these P and Q once again. If we go to P, then at this point we have to go to this vertex, then from here there's only one edge left, we have to go to this vertex, then we have to go to this vertex down here, Q, and then we have to go back to our starting point. So you can see here, we're either going to go to P, in which case there's only one option, or if we were to go to Q, once again there's only one, it's the same cycle, but just going round in reverse. So this is saying then that for each of these 120 cycles of length 5, there's only actually two choices in each case, which is where we go around this other cycle of length 5 in one orientation or the other. So we've got 240 ways of doing this with a cycle of length 5 followed by another cycle of length 5. So then for our total number of Euler cycles, which can help us to draw this graph without lifting our pen off the page, we have our total of 2 times 720 plus 2 times 480 plus 240 for our 5 and 5. You'll notice here we don't gain anything by swapping the 5 and 5 because this is just a cycle of length 5 followed by another cycle of length 5 which you've already covered. So when we add all of these up we get a total of 2640 Euler cycles on this graph. So there's 2640 ways of drawing this graph without taking your pen off the page.